Hi guys, David Farmer here. And today's quick tip is going to be uh, one of my favorite, absolute favorite new features in Pro Tools 11. And it's this little guy right here, the fade in button. And you can get to it either up here or in your transport window. And what it does is it automatically fades up every single event that's playing in your session at, at one time. Uh, let me give you an example of how Pro Tools used to sound before we had this fade in. This is just some pink noise. Take a listen to this. You hear how that attack is super sharp and sort of like a knife edge? Well, look what happens when we turn on the fade in. So what this will do is really help save your ears from being fatigued. Um, it's, a, it's a different animal altogether than this preference that's always been there under operation called clip auto fade in and out of, you know, I set mine to one millisecond or zero. What that does is actually put an automatic fade on the boundaries of a clip. But this little guy right here, the fade in button, takes place across all your tracks no matter where you are in the timeline. As soon as the transport engages, it fades up everything to whatever this value is. And this is set in, what's it, what is it called? It's uh, minutes and seconds. Yeah, minutes and seconds. So I can tell you if you're on a mixed stage and you've got several Pro Tools systems firing up and locking up, whether it's music, sound effects, even just something like backgrounds, and you're mixing at 85 dB, when everything bangs on at once, it is brutal, and you do this all day long. So whether you're on a mix stage or whether you're sitting in your edit room or design room, every time you press, how many times a day do you press play? So this will really help save your ears. Now, there's something I want to point out here that you have to be careful of. Now, right now I've got this track down here. Is uh, This track, is, the, this pink noise is bust to record on this track. And my pre-roll is turned off. Now watch what happens. You see at the very head here, what happened was it's still fading up when it's recording. So you have to be careful of that. It's the only, it's the only thing I have to warn you about with this. You have to make sure that your pre-roll is longer than your fade in. So now my pre-roll is set to one second and my fade in is at a quarter second. So now watch what happens when I hit record. The levels are fine because the pre-roll went back further than the fade-in happens. So let's say this is about a second before I was going to record. It fades up for a quarter second, then it's at full volume. So, you know, whether you're doing bounce to disc or recording to another track, I would recommend that you always, especially if you're recording, keep your pre-roll longer than your fade-in time. Anyway, that's today's quick tip. Hope that helps you. Thanks for watching.